OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Thank you for being with us today. I'm really excited about this particular presentation and we are really um, at OTAN and with CAP Technical Assistance Project trying to trying to recruit um, as many agencies as possible or consortia uh, to come on board with Canvas, the paid version of Canvas, and really experience all that it uh, has to offer. And so for the next hour or so, we're going to be looking at um, the access and equity and outcomes that are possible with the Canvas Learning Management System and what we've put in place in order to be able to assist uh, with the implementation and adoption of Canvas for your program and your students. So if you can take just a minute and um, pop in the chat, please, um, your name, location, and role. That would be great. And then I can get a sense of uh, who's in the room with us today. So your name, location, and role. And maybe also add whether or not you, um, you have adopted Canvas at your site at this point, the paid version of Canvas. Good, so a lot of people using Canvas. What we're also trying to do, and maybe some of you can help us to do it, is really kind of spread the word about this, um, you know, about Canvas, uh, the opportunity that we're currently offering through OTAN and Cape Technical Assistance Project to really expand Canvas to all adult education agencies within California. So if folks don't have it, or maybe they're using the, um, the free version of Canvas, they can consider coming on board and we'll, um, we'll let you know a little bit more about how to do that and how to, how to spread the word with and for us as we move forward. All right, so thank you. Keep on, uh, keep on keeping on in the chat. That would be great. I would like this to be really interactive today. So as you have questions, um, please pop them in the chat, or if it makes sense uh, to come off of mute, you're welcome to do that too. And um, I just wanted to, I guess, to close out this particular slide, just want to say that the Canvas Learning Management System Project is a joint effort led by the Outreach and Technical Assist Assistance Network, OTAN, the CAPE Technical Assistance Project, and the Sacramento County Office of Education. They are our fiscal agent. That is where both OTAN and the Technical Assistance Project are located. So SCOE is an important partner in this. And um, in, I think we'll move on to the next slide. So our objectives for today's webinar, beyond trying to kind of get the word out of um, just our interest in, in bringing people on board with Canvas, is to give you a very brief history and vision for Canvas and adult education, to, um, to hear from two amazing instructors in the field, uh, ESL instructors specifically, who are going to talk to us about how they have used and implemented Canvas at their sites, sometimes in the classroom and sometimes with opportunities beyond the classroom. We're also going to talk with them about how they see Canvas providing access, equity, and outcomes to their students. And then my, uh, our CAPTAP and uh, OTAN uh, Canvas leadership team are going to be um, introducing themselves and, and we'll each talk about our roles and how um, the California Distance Learning Cooperative, which is the umbrella uh, organization that, um, that organizes all adult education um, agencies who are using Canvas, they all fall under that California Distance Learning Cooperative, and we'll tell you some of the benefits of belonging to that. And then if you have not yet uh, adopted or you're kind of in the process of adoption and implementation, we'll talk about um, what those next steps look like. So those are the objectives for today. And here is our agenda. So. I don't know that I formally uh, introduced myself. <laughs> My name is Renee Collins. I'm the uh, Director of Adult Education at Sacramento County Office of Education and the Director of OTAN and Cape Technical Assistance Project. 
our additional introductions of our teachers and of our leadership, our Canvas leadership team, I will make as we as we move through the uh, presentation. The uh, following um, this will will next listen to um, our panel of Canvas practitioners. We'll go into an overview of the California Distance Learning Cooperative, talk about the benefits, and answer any questions that you may that you may have still. At this point, I want to just take a take a minute and kind of warm ourselves up and get uh, get us uh, all participating again and answer the following question, please. What is the best digital learning experience you have had as a learner or an educator and why? Think about that and then pop your answer into the chat. One more time, what is the best digital learning experience? you have had as a learner or as an educator and why? And you're welcome to come off with mute if you wanna come off with mute and speak as well. Thank you, Mandalee, for putting the question in the chat. Jamie, that's a nice plug for the OTM conference. Thank you. All right, Elsa is talking about Blackboard and easy access to class announcements and assignments. So another learning management system. Blair is also talking about an experience with a learning management system and having 24 seven access. Another plug for TBLS. Thank you, Diana. And UPM board training. Good. Hopefully we can get back in the classroom and start using those. I was, um, I was thinking about what mine was and um, I was, I think pregnant with my, with my, Third, maybe my third child, um, and had a midterm scheduled um, when I happened to go into hospital for to deliver him, and I was able to take that midterm from my hospital bed <laughs> because um, it was able to be done online. And um, all those years ago, it was crazy, but um, that child is now 22, and I think that was one of the, you know, the most transformative. Um, experiences for me to know how um, accessible uh, distance and online um, education can be. So that was, uh, that was great. And I did pass that class. <laughs> okay. How oh, funny, Jamie, she also happened, she also finished her master's while having a baby. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go on to the next slide. And I'm going to give just a brief project overview, um, which includes those items that are listed there. So a little history, um, learning management systems have been around for a long time. We know Moodle, Blackboard, Google Classroom, for example. OTAN has utilized Moodle for the last 15 years, and now we're making this transition to Canvas. The pandemic has spurred us to provide increasingly accessible and equitable learning platforms, as well as to further align our K-12 adult and community college educational systems. Canvas is recognized as a leading high quality learning management system and has been adopted by the full community college system higher education systems, 
and by many K-12 districts. OTAN and Cape TAP launched a Canvas pilot in January of 2021 with 25 agencies. Canvas is not only for distance learning, as many of you know, it can also be used in face-to-face -face and blended classrooms. We'll be able to visualize through some brief Canvas demonstrations how Canvas has relevance during the pandemic and beyond. With support from the California Department of Education and the Chancellor's Office, we are able to extend our offer of statewide leveraged pricing for Canvas to additional WIOA, Title II, and CAP agencies. Through the spring of 2023, OTAN and Cape Tap are able to waive a one-time Canvas startup fee of $2,600 for agencies that come on board during our expansion. We are also able to provide 50 free paid licenses to agencies for the foreseeable future. We expect that Canvas is here to stay and, um, and that the 50 free licenses will, be, will just be part of that package. Beyond providing time for personnel to be trained and for administrative support of this effort, agencies or consortia could have little to no out-of-pocket costs. For those that want to expand more quickly and ad need additional licensing, we've negotiated low cost fixed licensing, and we'll discuss this more as we move through the PowerPoint on how an agency could request additional licenses. Overall, our vision is to make Canvas available to all of our adult education agencies statewide and to support the implementation, training, and maintenance of the, of the platform moving forward. All right, now we're at what I consider the fun part. I am going to, um, in, in just a second, um, inter well, I will introduce Julie Casperson Schultz. She is an ESL assistant professor at Sierra College and Diana Vera Elba. She's one of our OTAN subject matter experts, as well as an ESL instructor and open educational research uh, resources, I'm sorry, Open Education Resources Faculty Coordinator at San Diego College of Continuing Education. And, um, you know, being that the community colleges are a couple, probably a couple years ahead of us as far as the, um, the use of Canvas, they, I certainly consider them uh, experts uh, in this case to be able to share, uh, to share how they, they have um, been able to utilize uh, Canvas with their students and in their programs. So um, Julie and Diana, do you want to come off of mute and, and say any, introduce yourself in any additional way and maybe talk about um, how Canvas is used in your, at your sites? I could start, I, I think. Hi, I'm Julie, and I, I work for Sierra College, as Renee said, but I also have a background in adult education. I worked in adult education before I transitioned to community college, so I was um, working in adult ed for quite a few years as a, an ESL teacher. And we use Canvas at our school site. Um, well, all college, all community colleges in California use Canvas. And during the pandemic, instructors at Sierra College were required to use Canvas while remote. Um, in general, it can be used to supplement an on-ground class and as a standalone learning management system with asynchronous and synchronous classes. It can bridge online and on ground learning and what's great another great thing is teachers can share their canvas material on the commons and maybe you'll hear more about that. Perfect, thank you Diana. Yes, hi i'm Diana Vera Elba with San Diego College of continuing ed and how our district uh, uses canvas as an LMS um, we not only use it for teaching and housing materials and resources for our students in the form of modules. Um, we also use it to provide faculty professional development through self-directed courses, as well as facilitated PD. Um, our individual departments have a discipline-specific Canvas shell where leaders and faculty can share materials with each other. Um, and then we have coordinators like myself and um, Monica, who's also here at the conference, um, where we have um, 
OER canvas shells Z, uh, for ZTC, zero textbook cost materials and free teaching resources for faculty departments and disciplines at our college. That's incredible. You have, you have taken us so far beyond the classroom and that's exciting, that's exciting to think about and um, the possibilities for our, for our different leadership projects that we have within a little bit. Great. So uh, Julie, I'm going to invite you to share your share your canvas. Um, All right. Courses. Okay, so I'll do a, I put together a few a few assignments and activities and I'm going to share, but I wanted to read a student quote first. This is from a, not an ESL specifically a, an ESL student, but somebody from Sierra College. We did a, a a survey, a campus survey, and I saw this quote and I said, oh, I'm going to read this. Course content is now online as well as in class. This is wonderful as I can review the material over and over and then ask the teacher questions. This has significantly strengthened my learning. I think Canvas has been very helpful for students. In the classes where it is not used, the knowledge transfer is much less. So I thought that mm -hmm. was a really powerful statement from one of our students. Absolutely. And let me share. Now, so Diana mentioned modules, and this is how we do um, our weekly work in Canvas. We use modules, and so I put together a little module for this workshop. Um, my module for students are, are, of course, different, and the way we build them, um, you, you can, you know, you scaffold the information and then maybe have a quiz or some sort of an assignment, scaffold, 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 you know, provide material information, videos, content, little by little, and then develop the weekly modules like that. And, but I wanted to just show you a few, a few um, pages and assignments that I use in some of my classes. So I'll start with the home page. This is a home page for one of my classes. We have home pages for all of our classes. And um, I chose to put this so when students come on, they see this right away. Um, we can I can change it. I just updated it with I stand with Ukraine. So when they come to my home page, they can see this immediately. And then, you know, the, I can add some other information. Life is pretty cra crazy. Let me know if there's something I could do to support you. And then we can scroll down and welcome to the class. There's a picture so they know their teacher. I publish my classes a, a few days before school starts so they can look on here before we even meet. And so we have um, instructional assistants that are really big parts of our classes and really helpful. Here's a welcome video the students would be able to watch even before school started starts. So it, it might talk about the books we use and we're low cost LTC and ZTC also where our college is going that way. Zero cost textbooks and low cost textbooks. Um, I just wanted to mention that. Here's my instructional assistant um, welcoming students to the class. And then here's some buttons they can go to. They can click on the syllabus. I made a Padlet about me. So if they want to see their teacher and see a little bit more about me, some fun stuff, they can do that. And then welcome to the class. Basically, here are our books, links to the books, where to get them. Um, and then a little information, how to reach us in the first week, um, a link to our first Zoom, a link to a little survey quiz I do on Canvas, get to know you quiz. And then set my contact information and my embedded my instructional assistance information. And basically that's the home page. So all of your, you know, your information that's the students would need to start the class and they can come back to throughout the semester if they need to do that. And I'm just going to kind of go through each one if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and this is a way I just wanted to share that you can embed videos through YouTube or through studio. And so this the students could watch, you know, um, and then you we can embed quizzes in there also. So you could embed a quiz in the video through studio. You can like pause it, add a question. So as the students are watching, they would answer a question. Or um, you could, you know, this is a this is a um, oh, this is not it. <laughs> Sorry. This is me reading a book. This is studio and I recorded myself. So I read the book every week for the students that can't come to Zoom. We read two little readers and that this is a reading and writing class. And, but I wanted to show you what you could do with these videos. So you could make a comprehension quiz on Canvas. So after they watch the video or read my 
book or you know read the chapters and I, I make vocabulary quizzes and comprehension quizzes and I let the students take them up to three times so there's learning you know if they don't get it right it's not like okay you got eight out of ten and you're done no they can like go back review it look again answer the questions again maybe maybe um, ask me ask our tutor ask a family member for help because all that I think is they're learning while they're doing that and then this is a community vocabulary padlet. And so all the students would post to this and then they can, you can go through and the students could go through and see the words you know, that, that their classmates have posted. And they're, not supposed, they're supposed to look at it and, not, and they're not supposed to post what's already there. So I can make vocabulary quizzes off the vocabulary that they have chosen out of our content. And I love that. Um, and that, that's, this is a Padlet, so I've integrated a Padlet into Canvas, and it's, it's pretty easy. And the students get it right away. All you do is click on this button and they can add to it. Julie, how is the learning for, as a, you know, as a teacher learning Canvas? I, some, some folks on the call might wonder, you know, is, is it even possible for my teachers to produce all this? That's a very good question. It is a learning curve and I took Canvas basics maybe three times or two or three times before I started using it. This was years ago because I began using it as a supplement to my on ground class. So I, you know, it took a little while to get used to it to figure it out. But now it's like, you know, it's once you get it, it's really easy and it's really fun to like create new things and what can I do next? You know, what could be exciting for the students? Um, and there is 24 hour support. I love it, love it, love it. And I think you're, you get it with your, your, um, pay, your subscription. So I can call Canvas at any time. I love it. Midnight, 365 days a year, 24 seven. So if I ever have a question, how do I do this? I lost this page. What, what is this? How, you know, that always help. They're wonderful. And so this is just something I put in there. I like to humanize my classes. Um, Michelle Pakansky Brock has done a lot about human, humanizing our courses online. So once in a while, I might just pop in my module, just something about myself. Hi students, how was your weekend? This is what I did. What did you do? So then the students can actually respond. So this is all the student responses I got. Here's what I did over the weekend. And then we can kind of read about each other. So it's not really related to you know, the course content, but it's building community and it's, it's sharing together. And it, it just, you know, feels like we're, we're like, you know, a class. we can learn from each other. And then, so every week I do a humanity check-in and this is so that students can tell me how they're doing. So I don't, because I don't see them, you know, at school and, and even if we're at school, we don't really have time to check in with students all the time, right? Because we're off to other classes, they have to go. But this is a really a time for the students to tell me how are they doing? So you can, they can write like, all is great, I'm excited, or they can ask me a question, they can tell me what's confusing, they can share something about themselves. So I've had students say, I'm really confused about this, or gosh, I didn't understand this week. So then I can write a comment back and say, oh, let me help you, meet, you know, can you meet with me? Or here's a video that might help you or something like that. Or they might tell me something like, I've had a really hard week teacher, you know, this happened to my son and this and that. And it's like, and I think they just want someone to, to listen. So then I can just respond to them. I'm, you know, I'm so sorry to hear this. Um, thank you for sharing. You know, I hope things get better or something like that. So I, I love this part. I do it every week in the module. And so I get to hear from every student and they get points, you know, for all this stuff, little points. Um, I also do surveys throughout the semester. So I do one at the beginning and the middle and the end and I listen to them and I can see their comments and I try to incorporate, you know, their feedback into maybe like a student once told me, can we have some more videos with more, we want more quizzes, video quizzes. And so I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. So, you know, that's good feedback from a student. So I can work on myself and maybe create some more video quizzes. And so this they'll, they'll do. And so it's basically, how are you doing? Any feedback? Do you need any help kind of thing? So just checking in. And then um, this one, I'm gonna go over here. So I just wanted to show what else. Show what else. This is called a discussion. And this, the, we were reading a book and they're in the book, they were talked about a harvest festival. So I said, Can, let's share harvest festivals from our country. So what a great way to share. And we don't, you know, in class, you'd have to have each student come up to the computer, find an image and share it. It would take a while. So here, it's all here. And I just gonna scroll through and show you how beautiful. So I shared first, cause I like to kind of model. Here's Thanksgiving. And then the students would come on. Oh my goodness, such, 
beautiful pictures of harvest, you know, festivals and food from their countries. So that was one week's one week's discussion, and then they reply to each other. And I can I get in there and I reply to students too. So that's a a really great way. And every student has a voice. Every student gets to share. Sometimes in class, the ones that raise their hand or the, the more talkative ones are the ones that share. But here, everyone has a voice. And I think that's all. This is like conference time, so it's a little different. Uh, I mean, it's, it's another way to make an appointment with me, but I think that's all I wanted to share. I know we needed to make it quick, so thank you. Thank you so much, Julie. That's yeah, it's fun to see what uh, you know what teachers produce, the, the possibilities, and you know, a lot of times you hear, "Oh, my students like don't like learning online," but that's uh, you know we're experiencing quite the opposite, right? When we see all of that connection and relationship building. And um, so that's exciting to see. And I know my own children, I know are using Canvas, right? In their college courses. And um, I remember uh, one of my sons missed his first class. And my husband said, well, you better talk to the teacher and find out what you missed. He's like, well, I can just check Canvas. Well, you better see if they had any handouts. I'll just check Canvas. You better see if there's anything due coming up. I'll check Canvas. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's nice that we're creating this one-stop shop yeah. um, for students, but also making it easier on teachers because I don't know. I used to be an ESL teacher too, and I would I would keep my extra handouts right for those students that had missed the day before or what have you. And now you don't need to you don't need to really worry about that. You just have it all on on Canvas supporting your classroom, whether it's in person or remote. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate your sharing. I'm gonna pass it off to Diana and invite uh, her to share about her experiences with Canvas. Okay, thank you, Julie, for sharing. And thank you, Renee. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, so I'm gonna start off on the dashboard because I did mention that our, our district, we not only use Canvas for teaching, but we also use it uh, as a resource base or for professional development. Um, so the first um, shell that you see here on the dashboard is my course. The next one is, um, I'm also the OER coordinator. So I have a Canvas um, shell for resources that faculty can access. I've taken some professional development um, through the State Academic Senate on Open for Anti-Racism. So there's a shelf for that. Um, Monica is here. She's our ESL tech coordinator, and she has a, a shell that she shares with our faculty on anything technology-based. Um, so there are many ways to use Canvas. Um, you can have multiple shells um, for different purposes. I've taken, again, I've taken another PD. This is one of our proactive online course design, which is um, through our um, distance education coordinator. And the, we have distance education mentors because of the pandemic. Um, now, we were already teaching online prior to the pandemic, but of course, that expanded just like everyone else. And so those of us that were already teaching online um, became distance education mentors, and we were mentoring our faculty on um, how to use Canvas and how to teach online. And so from that, um, this course, proactive online course design was created. So can you share? Can you share a little bit about um, what a shell is? That sounds like a Canvas term that we, yes. maybe not so, everybody is familiar with. Yes, so actually these out here are cards. They're called cards. And then um, the shell is actually the Canvas um, site. So let me go into my shell. So this card um, with the book and the leaf, um, let me just go to- so That's what students would see also. They would just click the card and go right into the class. Correct. Um, so this is the actual shell and I have it on student mode. So this is what students would see when they come into my Canvas shell. So I believe um, we call them shells at our district, but um, they're also another reference is instance. So this is also called a Canvas instance. And um, this is 
um, when my students come in, this is what they see. So there are many ways to customize your Canvas uh, course. I have it so that the latest, the two last announcements that I send out to students. So this is another great feature of Canvas is there's an inbox over here to the left on the course navigation. And I can directly email individual students or the whole course. Or I can also add announcements or a combination of both. So when I add announcements, um, students can go to the announcements section here and see all the announcements that I've sent throughout the semester or from the home page where they arrive, they see the last two announcements. And again, you can customize this to only see the last announcement or the last three announcements or no announcements at all. So it's very customizable. That's what I like about um, Canvas. And, and students can get notifications. So the announcement will show up right across their cell phone right away. You can sign up for Correct. notifications. Correct. Um, so this is my home page, and I teach an uh, ESL reading course. Um, just like Julie, I have a welcome message. Um, I do use a, um, a liquid syllabus, and I send that out with a welcome uh, message, a welcome video to my students a week prior to uh, the class starting. And then students, I give students a couple different options and um, to access. So they can use this course navigation here to the left, but for those students that are using phones, it's always much easier to have buttons. So the same links that appear to the left here, um, I created these quick link buttons here, okay? So they can access, quickly access the syllabus, they can quickly access the modules, they can go straight to assignments, they can go on Zoom and they don't have to, I have the password and everything here, but they don't have to um, enter the password. Um, all they have to do is click this button and it'll take them straight to our Zoom meeting. Um, I also give them quick links for the current week modules. Um, and then I star the current week. Um, our course materials, I also put that on the home page. And again, this is all housed here in modules, but this is for quick access, especially with somebody, somebody who's using a cell phone or a tablet or a smartphone or a tablet. Um, and quick link to my liquid syllabus and then my contact information at the bottom. Um, so again, this can all be um, seen on a cell phone, uh, a smartphone, a tablet, a laptop and of course a desktop. So I'm going to go into the module section here so you could see how I organize um, my Canvas course. So at the very top I have student resources and there's these there's a really nice feature where you can hide um, the resources. Um, this is nice for students as well as their um, modules um, get longer throughout the semester, they can hide um, certain items or um, access them just by um, pressing the triangle there to the left of the um, heading. So I have student resources at the top. Um, I have a module 00 where students um, can use or can watch these how-to videos on orientation to Canvas, how to use the Canvas app. Um, and all of these videos, I would say probably 99% of these videos were created by our wonderful technology um, faculty, our technology coordinator, um, our distance education coordinator, our distance education mentors. We've all um, created these great videos, these how-to videos, and it's, it's been a, a team effort of faculty um, that have created these how-to videos, and there are quite a bit um, in here. And there are more. These are just the ones that I've added. Um, and then the next section is course materials. So notice that none of these have a number, and I really wanted to differentiate that for students because I wanted to let them know that all their resources that they need are at the very top of the module section. And then once we get into the modules, 
I do use a numbering system, and this has just become really um, more of a, a convenience for me as well as for the students. Um, so if a student emails me and says, I had a problem with the assignment, um, it's difficult for me to know which assignment, right, depending on which module they're working on. But if they say the assignment uh, 3.5, the assignment number 3.5, then it's really easy for me to um, access. So I do use this numbering system. So module three goes with, um, starts at 3.0, and then I just number all the way down um, as far as it goes, as far as that module goes. Now, every week um, I made it so that um, students have the same template, just different activities within that template. Um, so earlier Renee said um, how it's, it was easy for her to access her um, test from, from the hospital, right? Um, well, the same goes for students who miss our Zoom meetings. So um, each week I have an agenda, just like we would have an agenda for a presentation at the top, and then the lecture um, with slides that students can review down at the bottom. And then the next tab has the Zoom recording that students can watch. Okay, along with that lecture that goes with the Zoom recording. Um, so again, every week um, it has the same templates, the same headings, just the material um, within those sections change. So um, I do have some advanced features on here because like I mentioned, I have been using Canvas for quite some time. Um, so, um, so some of these tabs and things like that, um, Canvas does have training for it, but um, it's, it's not like a face-to-face -face training the way that OTAN would. So OTAN also provides um, Canvas support and, and in addition to Canvas support, um, Canvas training, which I've participated in and other uh, OTAN SMEs have participated in. So if you're interested in something like that, contact Penny or Renee about that. Um, I'll show you really quick one of um, our, my reading um, lessons. Um, so like Julie said, she embeds programs. One of the nice things you can embed also is Quizlet. That's really popular um, vocabulary um, app and you can embed it directly in Canvas. So there's lots of apps that you can embed where students don't have to go outside of Canvas. Um, so that's one of the things, uh, one of the apps that I embed for um, a lesson. And then um, they go on to reading. So you, you can also um, embed PDFs or add PDFs, um, but students can also download the PDF, so there's this little arrow um, for students to download, or if they want to see this, this is a reading article, if they want to see the article, I also include the story link, if students want to read it online. And um, so this is just a, a, an example of a way to um, organize, um, use color, use graphics, um, and just make it easier for students to visually um, see and um, follow the organization of the Canvas shell. Any questions about that? No, but that's fantastic. And it, it's great to be able to see the semester at a glance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. And I would imagine it helps you with your own organization from, absolutely from to try right <laughs> absolutely when, when i just have to add when you're building a course you don't have to have the whole semester laid out i was only like a, a few days ahead of my students sometimes when i was first building when we first went remote so you don't have to like have it all planned out you can kind of work as the weeks go by right but uh, there's also an ability in canvas to if you have like I mentioned, the weekly templates, if you know mm -hmm. that every week you're going to use some of the same materials. I tested it out this semester and it worked beautifully. Um, mm -hmm. There's a way uh, in Canvas to um, create 
the shell of the numbering, even the numbering and everything, you just um, plug in the numbers you want to use and the titles you want to use. And then um, it'll appear on this um, module screen, but when you go in, it'll be empty. So for example, I'll show you an example of one of those. Um, I know, let's see. Oh, I have to leave student view because, oh, okay. So the nice thing about student view, um, I forgot to mention is that if you are working on your course, like Julie mentioned, um, and you don't want students to see certain things, you just don't publish them. So um, notice that under teachers resources, these are my resources, these are my slides. These, this is the teacher's, met, the teacher's book, which has the answer key. So I don't want students to see that, but I want to be able to have access myself. So I just don't publish it. So you see the circle with the line through it. That means it's not published for students, but yet I have access to the materials that are in there. Okay, and my notes or, or anything that I need um, that um, I don't necessarily want students to see. So my, this is the back end, so the teacher's um, side of it. So it looks, it looks a lot more visually appealing to students um, than my back end teacher um, information does. So um, I'm just going to show you really quick what that empty shell. This is what I'm referring to. So in this module, I did not use um, this heading but it was there for me to use it if I wanted to. So I just created a standard template of the different uh, modules that I want or the different um, headings that I wanted in there. And then as I worked through the semester, I decided, okay, I'm going to delete some of these things. It's too much work for a five hour class or I'm going to add to this. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Diana. I wanted You're to welcome. ask both of you, um, maybe we'll start with Julie. How do your courses address access and equity for your student, for students? And, there you go. Pull that up. Okay. So um, I, I feel that our that our college can educate students who've never been able to take courses before. And that's what I'm really passionate about. And that's why I really want to be able to continue offering this, continue learning and growing in this, in this, you know, in this online environment. Um, we, like single parents, full-time workers, students with young children, students who have health concerns and students with learning differences who might learn better by being able to review videos and course content again and again. Those are the comments that I've heard from my students that I, I just keep in my mind. So I remember, you know, that these are the students that, that we wouldn't be able to have. If, if this wasn't an, if this weren't an option. So uh, I think that's how, you know, one big thing is just to get those students that weren't able to come before. And I have a handout that I'm going to share later on equity in, in Canvas. Um, how can we, you know, equitize our Canvas courses? And I have a whole handout on ideas I'll share at, after the questions. All right. Thank you so much. Diana, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yes, um, so Canvas offers the ability for students to access Canvas on any device, so including smartphones, like I mentioned, tablets, laptops, and desktops. And as a district, um, we've continuously um, worked on building student-centered digital equity and inclusion programs. So some of those campaigns have included providing laptops and hotspots for our students through our student equity and marketing programs. And I'm currently part of a committee who's working on digital literacy software, um, potentially using Northstar, as well as uh, providing tutoring for our students. So there's lots of ways to incorporate Canvas in your um, digital equity um, campaigns. Great, thank you. Maybe staying with Diana for just a second, how do, you, how do you feel Canvas has impacted your enrollment or persistence of students during the pandemic or before? So um, like 
all districts, the pandemic has had a negative impact on enrollment and persistence. However, um, our administration, faculty and support staff um, from day one of going uh, remote have worked diligently to provide students access to registration of our courses um, and having access to the software and hardware that students desperately needed during that time, as well as training our students and faculty on the use of Canvas. So not only did we have these um, programs through our distance education mentors, which several um, of the faculty that were already teaching online have uh, provided uh, faculty support, but we also had digital navigators for our students. Um, we had in our ESL department, um, we had phone, um, phone support for students where if, if they needed assistance, um, whether it was with technology or, or just even accessing their Canvas um, shell, we provided that support. Um, so these campaigns and more have positively impacted our enrollment and persistence, as well as help students gain those important techs, tech and digital skills for success in their courses, as well as in the workforce. Um, so one of the comments that's really interesting is now students are uh, requesting online courses because now that they've experienced them, they see how beneficial they are so they can still work and they can take a course online. And so um, just through training and through guidance and support of students, um, they have developed their own ideas of, you know, and kind of not even having that fear anymore of going online because initially it was, a, it was um, scary for students, right? That have, had never experienced that. But now we see, now it's, uh, we're turning a new leaf when students are requesting online courses. It was scary for all of us, I think, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we all had right. a sharp learning curve for sure. Um, the, when students come into adult education programs, they, uh, we asked them to take the student technology intake survey. And recently I looked at the results of that, which were more than 8,000 um, students responding to the survey. 68% of them said that they preferred online learning, which, you know, was kind of a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. Honestly, even now it was kind of a surprise. And yet it's, um, it's exciting to see that they are making that transition. They are feeling more comfortable. We're feeling more comfortable as administrators and educators. And so that's all really exciting. Thank you. Uh, Julie, what about you? How has yes. it impacted yes. enrollment? <laughs> some, some of the same kind of answers as Diana. Um, we, we saw our, you know, the numbers drop, but, but, but it seems like they're coming back. And again, they're, we can see they're voting with their feet. We had on grind and on ground and online classes this semester and the onlines are overflow. I had to open a second section of one of my classes because I had so many on the waiting list and that, that was my online class. So, and, and just the comments that I've heard, I, I um, am always checking in with the students. So, so I, um, I hear from them that they want online, they need online. And um, our campus, like Diana's, we, I do a tech survey at the beginning of the semester. So I know what devices the students have. Um, and I just want to know, because if the student tells me they're using a phone, I can reach out and say, did you know the college will loan you or in some cases give you a laptop? And we have four, four things that we give or loan, I think, um, hotspot, earbuds, webcam, and a laptop. So they can get those things easily. And I provide the link, it's a Google doc and they'll mail it to their home. So that's really an amazing way. And some of them do prefer their phones, but I like to offer, are you sure? <laughs> With the writing class, it's a little hard on your phone. Um, and then um, our embedded tutors also are very, very helpful. Like you had your digital navigators, we have our embedded tutors in the tutor center. So the students have that support, that additional support for tech or course content, whatever they need. Um, and that's kind of the bigger answer. Um, but I did reach out to my data department because I wanted to know how am I doing as an instructor? How, how are my students really doing? You know, so they can look at the data of my classes and, and see. And so what I found out was the retention and persistence is actually higher in my online classes. And my students have 
success rates have been higher completing the next level. They can look into that. You know, they can go back and look at the past semesters and see when my students finished one online class, how did they um, do in the next level when they finished? So I thought that was really interesting. So thank you. That's nice to be able to have uh, have that resource, right? To be able to really look at the hard data and and analyze, you know, whether it's working or not, for sure. So Julie, what about um, student outcomes? Do you feel like um, those have increased in general? Those students who are pers persisting, are they are they seeing better outcomes? I mean, it sounds like they are. They're completing, you know, at the next level with increased at an increased rate. What more do you see? Um, well, we see that students are just maintaining the higher levels of achievement. We can see that through the work, through the, through the, um, you know, the, the surveys and the, just the, you know, the quizzes and assignments and our SLOs, you know, we have to, um, student learning outcomes, we have to assess um, every so often for different courses. So, um, yeah, I think that they're, they're maintaining and you know, the data shows that they're even doing maybe a little better at the next level. And then, um, but one thing I wanted to mention was that how much personalized feedback you can give the students in this environment. And I think that really helps with outcomes too. So for every assignment or quiz or, you know, the humanity check-ins that I do, I can provide a submission comment. Every time the student submits something, I can personalize it and say, oh, I'm not sure if you, you know, look at your past tense verbs. Let me send you a video again or meet with me, I can see that, you know, maybe we might need to study this a little bit more or something. So I could see and I can target like, you know, how to some kind of feedback for each student. And then the students are able to submit comments to my submission comments so they can write back to me and ask me a question about my comment or, um, you know, make a statement or whatever. So I think that personalizes it and that could really increase the outcomes because of that personalized, you know, um, personalized, attention and feedback the students can get. Yeah, we're, uh, I know with our, um, we have a digital uh, learning project that we're working on. And one of the sections is the social emotional learning aspect. And I think that this relationship building within Canvas is really, you know, really addresses that um, in some ways. Diana, how about you? What about outcomes that, that you're seeing with Canvas? Um, so similar to Ju Julie, I use, um, so one of the nice things about um, a feature in Canvas is it's called speed grader. So when you are looking at um, student work, um, you have the ability to continuously support student learning. Um, not only can you give written feedback, but you can also give audio feedback or video feedback. And, I teach a reading class online. And so my, one of my students weekly assignment was to um, either create an audio or video of themselves reading one of the passages that um, uh, was part of their assignments. So since they were giving me a either video or audio uh, feedback, I was also providing that. So I would write out the feedback, but I would also record myself because um, that was really important to students, not only to personalize the message for them because it was personalized for their specific assignment, um, but also to hear um, my response. I teach ESL, so pronunciation is really important. And so students really appreciated, um, like Julie, I, I, I gave um, entry uh, surveys and exit surveys. And that was one of the, my students' favorite thing is my audio and video feedback. Um, and then also um, now that students have had the opportunity to experience online and distance learning, like I mentioned, there's been a surge of students requesting that modality. And that's because of the convenience, you know, it's accessible on any of their devices. And then it's, it can be equitable with the appropriate supports. I forgot that I put myself on mute. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Julie. Thank you so much, Diana. I know uh, Diana needs to run in a couple minutes, but um, 
I would invite anybody that has any questions for Diana and Julie to pop them in the, the chat. And if they can't get answered here today, we can certainly, I can certainly reach out to them. I know how to reach them and, uh, and get those answers for you. But uh, we really, really appreciated this. I think sometimes, um, you know, particularly with administration and not being, you know, there in the classroom with the students, it, Canvas can feel like a really abstract kind of concept and system. And so I think you've really helped us to bring it to life and see how our students can benefit and our programs can benefit from, um, from its adoption. Any last words that you would like to share? I just popped in the document um, in the chat, and I don't know if you wanted me to talk about a few of them or if people could just read them later. Um, yeah, I think be, we're, uh, okay. timing wise, I think I'm gonna have to ask that people just um, read them and, and maybe reach out to you if, if they would like to after the fact. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Diana. Okay, so um, as you can see, we are uh, we are at uh, two o'clock, but we are we're, we've still got a little bit of our uh, <laughs> um, presentation to go. So if you can stick with me, and Mandalie, if you can bring up our bring up our um, PowerPoint again. Um, are you seeing we'll it now? Talk. We are. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> so um, this piece is going to be looking at. Um, our California Distance Learning Cooperative. And at this point, I'm also going to introduce some of our Canvas leadership um, team from TAP and from OTAN. So I don't know best how to do this, but Mandalia has been sharing the slides and she is, uh, Mandalia, do you wanna come off mute and introduce yourself quick and what your role is within the um, sure. Canvas? Yeah. And Sure. Hi there, everyone. Um, my name is Mandalay Gonzalez, and I'm a project specialist with CAPE Technical Assistance Project. And um, we've been working in partnership with OTAN and um, really just helping provide um, the messaging and making sure that the communication um, is getting out to all of the right people to hopefully um, put Canvas in the hands of all of our adult education agencies. And I'll go ahead and hand it off to Penny. Thank you. Thanks, Mandalee. Uh, my name is Penny Pearson, and I am a coordinator here for, at OTAN for distance learning projects. And I work very closely with Renee as well as Mandalee on all of the logistics and all those little pieces that come from uh, coordination and working with our customer base in terms of uh, getting all of our adult schools on board with Canvas. Um, many year uh, Moodle administrator. So um, it's been a very interesting transition to go from Moodle to Canvas, and we're working with a lot of our teachers that are still working on Moodle to get them into Canvas. And I think there's some great supports and resources within Canvas to help those teachers make that transition a lot easier. So anything else, just let me know. Do we have anybody? I'm not able to see who's all on the call. Um, we, <clears throat> I think, we have also have Q who is here. All right, Q, you want to come off of mute and say hi? Hi there, my name is Q Chong. I am the fiscal manager for the Sacramento County Office of Education Adult Education Program. I'm dealing, I work with uh, Renee, with Penny and also Mandalay in this leadership project. I am the person who's gonna be handling your MOUs, your invoicing and quotes. So if you have any fiscal related questions, feel free to reach out. Hope to work with you in the future. Thank you, Q. Okay. If I'm missing anybody else, feel free to come off of mute, but I'm gonna keep going. Um, so the CDLC, uh, which is also the California Distance Learning Cooperative, is provides Canvas services to adult education agencies and consortia across the state. This is something that we have developed within structure to make sure that um, adult education agencies from across the state have a place to land and they're getting um, services that are appropriate for our adult students. This unique group uh, was established by OTAN and Cape TAP and has several benefits to those who choose to join with us. Our goal 
is to uh, make sure that all of our adult education agencies have access to the cooperative, that everyone has a unique uh, Canvas learning environment and have, has access to licensing at a reasonable low rate. So um, I know sometimes the per person rate for Canvas can be as much as $16, $17 per person. Uh, we've been able to work with the um, instructor to get it to $5.50 per student, and that's locked in for the next two years. So that was an exciting um, um, thing that we were able to lock in. Um, OTAN manages the state contract with Instructure and works on behalf of adult education in California to maximize the services that are going to be able to benefit students and to negotiate that uh, rate for licensing. So when an agency formalizes their partnership with the California Distance Learning Cooperative, um, they will use an MOU um, that we will discuss further in just a little bit. When an agency joins the CDLC, they work with Instructor to establish a unique Canvas learning environment. Uh, OTAN's unique learning environment is, um, or URL is aecalifornia.instructure.com. But um, as an agency or a consortium, you can determine what your URL will be. So maybe it's, um, San Juan Adult Ed. Instructure. Com, or maybe it's Santa Clara. Instructure. Com, or Adult Ed. Adult Ed. Um, Bay Area. Instructure. Com. So you will have your own personal URL that students will learn to uh, know and love as you um, as you continue to uh, implement and expand Canvas for your agency or your consortium. So agencies, uh, um, the environment, that uh, URL, the environment, learning environment has a cost of $2,600 for setup. Uh, currently, we are waiving that cost for agencies who join um, the CDLC. And we have, as I mentioned before, we've also negotiated that rate of $5.50 per license, but knowing that those first 50 licenses are at absolutely no cost. So if you are interested in the paid version of Canvas, but you're not sure that you want to, you know, start doing it with all of your programs across the board, you can start with one or two classes, have those 50 licenses at no cost. You'll have your unique learning environment at no cost because we're waiving that cost. And you can, um, you can come on board a little more slowly. If you know that you want to embrace Canvas and you have a CTE, uh, you know, you have a CTE program and HSD program and ESL program, maybe an adult with disabilities program, and they can all benefit from Canvas and you want to go full board, you can do that as well. You would just pay that $5.50 per license fee for the students and that's your full cost. So, um, Anyhow, so let's go through the benefits a little bit, and I will, um, I will invite um, our team to kind of share a little bit about this too. So uh, one of the ben benefits to uh, joining the CDLC is that there is an implementation onboarding, what we're currently calling our implementation sprints. Nandali, do you want to come up and talk about a little bit about what those implementation sprints are? Yeah, sure. Um, sure. And I'll invite anyone to jump in if there's anything that I am overlooking. Um, so the implementation um, is a four week uh, asynchronous course where we are taking on, or rather instructor implementation team is taking on the agencies um, and really walking through each step of the process, integrating um, your the staff that's going to be enrolling students, helping build out those courses, um, what does enrollment look like? And if you have a student integration system or a system that you wanna have automated, or maybe you do a manual upload, if you choose to maybe like Renee had said, you're only gonna do one class. So it might be easier to do a CSV upload. So they're gonna take you through those steps. Um, initially, they'll ask you to fill out a form and that's when they really give you the nuts and bolts of, okay, let's identify what are the roles, what are the responsibility, um, that are associated with that role and who best in your organization fits that. So maybe it's the registrar um, for some of those pieces. Maybe um, 
it's like a TOSA that you have or a lead teacher that's going to take on another aspect. So you really get the layout. And then they take you, like I said, through that four week course. Um, so that way, by the end of that four week course, you'll have your own Canvas instance. Um, you will have worked in it and really just built out the the foundation and then you move into the next five weeks and the the next five weeks is um, asynchronous where you do it on your own or at your own pace and then it takes you through or the teacher through how to build out those courses or those course shells um, and that's and then probably after nine weeks you're at that point um, on your own and up and running um, but we are still here to support um, OTAN still will offer those training classes and then I did pop in the chat um, our email so as things progress if there's questions we're here to support you the whole way through um, and as Renee mentioned you still have that tier one support so with the CDLC um, they've negotiated the tier one support so it provides your faculty as well as your learners um, but 24 hours support, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, any questions that might arise if you're working on it at like 2 a.m., which I hope you're not, but it could happen, um, they're there to support you. I think I covered it. Penny? Yeah, that's fantastic. Missing? Thank you. So in addition to uh, in addition to the administrative and teacher support, that 24-7 customer service support. That also includes our students. Because our students are adults, they also, unlike our K-12 counterparts with their students who are under 18, um, so unlike them, we are able to have our students access that 24-7 customer service support as well. So if they, if they are doing Canvas at 2 in the morning, which we hope they are not, but we know some do, they can also call customer service support um, and get the help that they need. And um, uh, some of the additional benefits include uh, Canvas's training portal. Diana made some mention of the training portal um, having a lot of webinars. There's live webinars, there's recorded webinars. Um, to have access to all of that is free. It can help you to know how to use, you know, how to integrate, um, how to build quizzes, how to develop new course shells. Anything that you can imagine related to Canvas is in this training portal and accessible um, to any of our um, agencies coming on board. Um, the next two, I'm going to invite Penny to talk about the CDLC Commons and the Learning Tools Interoperability. Um, sure. Thank you. Um, the, I'm, I'm a great advocate of open educational resources, and I'm a great advocate of sharing. So I was very excited when we found out that we could have what is our basically our in-house version of Canvas Commons. For those of you that maybe uh, know about that, that is a repository of all things Canvas related in terms of people sharing courses. And they can be shared as teacher created courses, they could be shared um, for common um, publisher courses that are available under that license. Um, and most of that, what you find in the Canvas Commons, terrific materials, but they're a little high for our learners or they're really low because they're for a K-12 environment. So what we're hoping to do with the, with the um, uh, ZDLC or our cooperative commons is that we will make available shared courses specifically designed and created and vetted by adult education teachers. So OTAN has created and used several shared courses on the Moodle side of the house when we're using that learning management system. We are working with our subject matter experts such as Diana Vera Alba to move those courses and convert them over to the CDLC commons. Um, of course, you know, we have have to be a little uh, cautious only in the sense that we want to make sure that those are high, those are high courses, courses and they provide, they provide our, teachers our teachers with the full spectrum of what they want to do in a course. Um, we in that sense, we also have the capability, and, and this is not specific to the cooperative, but it's this these LTIs, the learning tools operability. And that means that a, a course can connect with another resource. So for example, in the health sciences, you may have a class that you're teaching on phlebotomy, or maybe it's CNA, and you use a um, publisher's textbook. Well, many of them have this ability to be able to connect your Canvas 
course to that um, textbook and the digital resources available there. And you it's at no additional cost. You're already paying for the textbook. So now you have this interoperability where you can connect the two. Many are um, you know, also include several LTIs that are at no cost. Um, and OTAN is hoping that we can at least share with the, um, with the community, with our cooperative, some of these LTIs that we believe are very useful and powerful uh, teaching tools, including like Learn360. There was an earlier session on that. We have some other pilots going on that um, when I find it, I'll post it in the chat where we're talking about JUICE, which is an LTI that is from Relatable Learning. And it's um, really targeted for high school completion. And it's been, uh, we've been running a pilot that I think folks will find interesting. So from, from that point of view, you, those, those learning tools, uh, in, those LTIs allow for such an expansion of content and um, interoperability between many, many different resources. So some of you uh, may be using, say, the Google Suite. Well, there's an LTI for that. You can easily integrate Google into your Canvas uh, shell. And I think that that just makes it just so much more powerful for teachers to have that type of interoperability between these different tools that we use. Um, so my, you, you saw Julie, she, I think she were using Padlet, Julie, was that right? That may be an LTI or that just may be an embed, but there's ways to get that information into your courses. So from there, um, we have the other items. I, I don't know, Renee, if you want me to talk about the template and studio, I do have that link ready when you are. Yes, keep going, Penny, you're doing great. Okay, all right. <laughs> so um, one of the things that the cooperative did and through our agreement with Instructure is that we have an adult education course template. Now this was developed for us to share with all of our clients, all of our adult schools that join the cooperative. And this is a, an amazing, um, well-designed, it's got all of the right pieces put in there in terms of following UDL and allowing the flexibility of teachers to edit at will. So if they want to change the flavor, so to speak, of their course template, they can do that very easily. Um, and this is something that, you know, some folks just, they're not that worried about it, but sometimes it's really nice to have a uh, continuous visual reminder of where you are. And so a, a, an agency could use this as a way to brand their courses with, you know, the, the logo of the school or the school mascot or whatever the, the case may be. It's just a nice way to offer that consistency across the site. And then the last one down here is, I, I believe that um, Julie mentioned it before, of using Studio. We have full access to Studio for all of our teachers so they can use this and being able to create those quizzes using video is really exciting and i don't know how many how many esl teachers do we have in this group can we just like raise a hand or just say me 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 in the chat a few maybe okay well here's one we have um I don't know how many of you may have heard of H5P, but this is a short 41 second example of using H5P and a quiz at the same time. So for those of you that may know of uh, putting English to work, let's test your knowledge on how well you know the putting English to work uh, characters and programs. So I'm gonna post it in the chat. You can click on it and we'll give you about one minute of silence here so you can go and take that quiz. And then somebody can be brave and tell me how well they did. I am personally a huge fan of putting English to work. And I am so, uh, so excited to see these updates that are being made in Canvas. And Julie, I see your hand up. Your was hand that up, a hand up that, that hand you were an ESL, ESL teacher? teacher? Yeah, I thought so. OK. So that is just a very short example, kind of, of the power of studio. Um, and you heard Diana say before that she was also doing audio and video uh, feedback. Um, that is something that, you know, kind of is built in entirely into Canvas, not just uh, using studio, but even in the gradebook and, and other, um, the, the editor is very powerful in Canvas. And um, it's just a really, this, this is a nice cherry on top for uh, using Canvas through the cooperative because it is an extra additional service at a, at a higher cost for agencies that use it. So um, it's very nice to be able to offer it to uh, K-12s within California. 
Great. Thank Anything you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Did we did we have any that uh, successfully knew the PW char characters? How'd you do? Be brave. Did anybody actually answer the questions? I'm not seeing anything in the chat, Renee, so I think we can move forward. All right, that's okay. I think when I took it, I did. <laughs> I uh, did do well, actually. <laughs> um, all right, so our um, we're at that point of adoption and implementation. They say, oh, this sounds fantastic. How do I, how do I move forward with adoption? Or, or again, if you're listening, maybe help us spread the word. You know what? Can, what can we do, and, and what's the expectation of coming on board um, with the CDLC? So, um, once people have made a commitment, they're uh, they they will be signed up. Uh, well, they will sign up via the expansion list that is linked in this uh, presentation, and Amanda Lee just dropped it in the chat. The expansion list must be completed by an administrator so that we know that there is administrative support for this adoption. Um, there is also an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, that has been developed that, um, that is a very basic MOU, but it, it formalizes that um, agreement between us and the agency and allows us to act on behalf of the agency with when we uh, contract with Instructure. Um, the only thing that you complete besides uh, having administration um, sign their name and agreement to the MOU is how many licenses beyond the 350 licenses that you would want, and that would generate um, an invoice. So if you if you decided that you wanted um, you know, 100 licenses so that you had a total of 150 licenses to use in your agency this next year, then you would pay for 100 licenses, we would send you an invoice um, um, based on the MOU and the number of licenses that you had requested. Mm -hmm. um, we would also then, once you're on the expansion list, um, this can happen concurrently with the MOU getting signed because we know that that sometimes can be a process, right? It can take a couple months to get it through our boards if they need to go via the board, um, you can get still get started on the implementation sprints. So currently we have um, our implementation sprints are scheduled for the next few months, but we will get you um, signed up for an implement, implementation sprint and let you know when you're gonna be able to begin that process. And then um, the third bullet there just talks about, you know, we may be asking you um, for data about how's it going, how are you doing, um, to continue the support um, that we, we get from CDE and the chancellor's office. So they may want to know like how many people are participating, how many people are completing as a result of using Canvas, that type of thing. Similar questions to what I was asking Diana and um, Julie. So it's really pretty easy to come on board and, uh, and we strongly encourage uh, agencies to do so. And if you do know that maybe your agency or a, or a neighboring agency doesn't yet have Canvas and they may benefit from it, please let them know about this, uh, this opportunity because we've been trying to get it out via the Cape newsletter, via email blasts, via social media, in, in any way that we can think of, um, including these webinars and presentations at conferences, but, but you know, we don't always reach everybody. So whatever we can do to get the word out about this opportunity, um, it would be nice for people to be able to experience the paid version of Canvas without necessarily mm -hmm. having to put out a lot of funding to get started. All right, at this point, we have reached the questions and answers um, part of the presentation. So if anybody has any questions, I invite you to come off of mute and just ask them, or if you prefer to put them in the chat, you can do that as well. Did I convince anybody? <laughs> Everything was great. Everything was great. All the information is wonderful and uh, so grateful for this. 
session. Thank you, Francine. I know that there are several other sessions um, about you know Canvas this uh, during the TDLS. So if you're uh, if you have additional questions that you're curious about, I encourage you to check those out. I believe that there might be two additional um, two additional presentations after this. And I know I listened to uh, Francisco Pineda's yesterday and, and enjoyed that one. Renee, I just realized I forgot to post my session on um, getting started with Canvas and LTIs. So I'm going to post that. Uh, okay. Thank you. Oops. Hey, paste. There you go. On this last slide, I just put some uh, resources and contact information. Um, so you see that uh, there's a kind of a benefits, um, CDLC benefits flyer that we've put together. The expansion sign up is there, the MOU is there, and I know they've been dropped in the chat as well. Um, we do have a, a specific email that we ask people who are corresponding about Canvas um, and trying to reach out to us. If it's adult ed canvas at scoy.net or AE, sorry about that, AE canvas at scoy.net, AE canvas at scoy.net. So, um, it's great if people can reach out to us that way if they're interested in, um, in coming on board. All right, with that, I'm not seeing any additional questions. Thank you so much for your participation and sticking with us for the full 90 minutes. I didn't think that we'd take this, this long, but I'm so appreciative of you know, everybody that was here uh, participating. Thank you again to Julie. Thank you again to Diana, even though I know she had to step off. And then thank you to Q and Amanda Lee and Penny for, uh, for helping with this presentation as well. It, it takes a village as they all say, and um, this is certainly one. So thank you for participating.